Welcome back to my channel. So I've got a pretty easy install today, but it's for something that I've talked about on a lot of videos, but I've never actually covered how to install it. And I get a lot of questions on how to get uh, this pressure switch on the bike. So on any of my bikes where I have aftermarket rear sets, which is actually all of my modern mini motos at the moment, the standard plunger style switch to turn on the rear brake light when you depress the brake lever doesn't work and you need to install one of these instead. This is really cheap. It's only about $10 from Amazon and it's very simple to install. I'll link directly below uh, so that you know exactly which one to buy. There's two different thread pitches. So you need to make sure that you get the right one. I actually have all my bikes lined up here, but you can see here I have the Tiger rear sets and the pressure switch is right back here. So this is the Impact Tech bike and this one actually doesn't have the rear pressure switch installed. And because of that, the rear brake light doesn't work. So that's what I'm gonna be installing it on the bike today. This is my Repsol themed bike that also has the Tiger rear sets. And you can see the pressure switch right here. And similarly for the Yoshimura themed bike um, with the Impact Tech stunt kit, uh, it also has the pressure switch right here. So let me get this bike pulled out and we'll get this pressure switch installed. So the stock style plunger, like the one that I have here on my CT70, has this little pull where when you depress the brake lever, it pulls that rod out and it closes the circuit to turn on the rear brake light. Uh, so again, it's a similar setup on the Monkey and all of the Groms, but for the aftermarket resets that don't have a provision to hold this any longer, we're instead installing an inline uh, brake fluid pressure switch. So when you depress the brake lever and the pressure inside the brake lines increase, that's what closes the circuit to turn on your rear brake light. So there are two parts to this install. One is installing the pressure switch that goes in place of the bolt that's holding the rear brake line on. And then the other side are the electrical connections that we're going to plug into the stock harness. So let me take off the triangle here and show you the connections and we'll get this on. Interesting, so this bike actually still has the stock plunger on it, but it's not secured by anything to actually trip it. Let me. Make sure that it doesn't work. You can see that when I pull on it, it does turn it on, but there's no, again, nothing supporting it on the rear set to keep it from triggering. So anyway, I'm gonna pull this out and you can see the electrical connections are right here. Wow, and so this one actually came with the correct bullet connectors. So the bullet connectors I have here are the exact same as the factory ones that are on this bike. So this will be completely plug and play. There's no need to crimp on new connectors. I've ordered a few of these and each time it comes with a different connector or plug but this one came with the uh, male bullet connectors, so that's convenient. So we're going to remove this, I believe it's a 12 millimeter socket. And since this is at the top part of this brake system, you shouldn't need to bleed the brakes as long as you're not moving the bike around. So let me pull this off and get the new one on. Yeah, that was on there pretty tight. All right, and anytime you're changing brake components, you should use new crush washers. This kit actually comes with two, uh, but I think I'm actually gonna use some different copper ones that I have. So I'm gonna use some new copper ones, but it's fine to use the ones that come in the kit. I've run them on some other bikes before. Uh, and then again, this just runs like the bolt that we just took out. So make sure that you get a washer and then through the brake line, another washer and then you screw it down just like a bolt. And then use a 14 millimeter box wrench to get those last few turns in. And that's about it. So then uh, this plugs into these two plugs here. And actually I probably should have routed this behind this reservoir tube. So let me pull that out. All right, let's test it out. Kind of difficult to see, but you can see it uh, lighting up in my hand when I depress the brake lever. So that's all there was to that install. Super straightforward, but a critical install if you're doing aftermarket resets to retain the safety of that rear brake light. To clean it up, I'm going to use this little stock clip that was on the original setup. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, electrical tape to hold it back where it was. I'm gonna get the triangle on and that'll be it. And that's all there is to the install. The brake light works perfectly. And I also don't need to worry about changing rear sets now because even if I revert it back to the stock rear sets, I can just keep this inline pressure switch uh, and everything will work great. So anyway, thank you everybody for watching. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. Stay tuned for more videos and keep on building.